Welcome to Esprit's latest tips and tricks video. Today, we'll be discussing optimizing simulation usage and toolpath analysis in Esprit 2019. In my simulation parameters, I have two methods to control the maximum speed of my simulation. The first of which is by using display update frequency. My display update frequency um, controls how often the stock removed is updated by the number of blocks or lines of NC code that I have input. So if block numbers sit to one, I'll click OK and I will play simulation. This now shows my simulation stock being updated after every line of NC code. If I hit pause and go back into my simulation parameters, I can increase that block number to something larger like 50 and hit OK. Benefits is that simulation now runs faster. Um, however, if I have collision detection turned off and I set that block number to too high, um, I could miss a gouge in my toolpath. Um, if I set that block number to a number higher than the number of lines of NC code in my operation, I can miss that operation entirely. The second method for controlling my speed of simulation is by turning on real-time simulation. Real-time simulation calculates the speed of my simulation based on the feeds and speeds I have input in my operations. Much like the block numbers, my time interval in seconds controls how frequently my simulation is updated. I can click OK and play my simulation again. This is beneficial when timing between machine components is critical, such as in Swiss-style programming or for multi-turret lathes. I can also indirectly increase the speed of my simulation by modifying the various tolerances associated with my simulation. On my Simulation Parameters Options tab, this is my simulation tolerance. It, this controls the appearance of anything that is not defined in my machine setup or on the Solids tab of my simulation parameters. So in this file, that's going to be my tool holder. Increasing that tolerance value is going to make that tool holder appear faceted. I can click OK and hit Pause. Looking at my simulation from a top view, uh, my tool holder doesn't appear all that faceted. However, if I were to turn off the head of my machine and rotate my part around to look at that tool holder from the top, I can now see that it's faceted around the edges. I can also modify the tolerances on my solids tab. Tolerances on my solids tab control the appearance of my stock, target, and fixtures. Much like with my simulation tolerance, a larger tolerance value is going to make my stock, target, and fixtures appear more faceted. To demonstrate that, I'm going to modify the tolerance on my target from 1,000th to 100,000th. I have to click Update for that to take effect. If I click OK and pause my simulation, I can zoom in and get a good look at my part. We can now see that there are some, there's some faceting and you can see some triangles happening on the top of my solid. So a larger tolerance value is going to take me further away from a precise simulation. However, much like my simulation tolerance, it is going to run faster because it's reducing the processing power required of my PC. The last tolerance that affects my simulation is my stock automation tolerance, and that is found under Tools, Options, Machining. Uh, my stock automation tolerance controls the speed with which my stock removal is calculated. It also controls the precision with which my stock removal is calculated. So much like the previous tolerances that we've looked at, a smaller tolerance is going to be a slower, more accurate simulation. A larger tolerance is going to be a faster, less precise simulation. Lastly, while the spree simulation is an extremely powerful tool to see the movement of my tools, my machine, and any stock removal. Um, if I wanted to just see the movement of my tool in a given 3D or 5-axis operation, I could also run a toolpath analysis. This is located under Analysis Toolpath. This allows me to run through any 3D or 5-axis operation without running simulation. I can hit play and show the movement of my tool. Um, right now I have my trace tooltip filter on, so it's showing me the location of my tooltip during my uh, operation. I can turn on show tool axis. If I zoom in here, we can see the angle of my tool axis as well as my point spacing of my operation. If I check trace tool axis, that's going to show me the location of my tool axis during my operation. This allows me to also speed through to get to a specific point in my operation. So if I wanted to see the angle of my tool at this uh, location of my tool path, then I could do that. And this concludes today's tips and tricks video. We hope that you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new. Don't forget to visit our website at espreecam.com to sign up for our newsletter for more cool videos. Stay tuned for more tips and tricks.